Central Station, at the heart of Glasgow for 140 years. Meet the people who make the station work, running over 950 trains a day for 32 million passengers a year. Every day there's always some challenges. I've got good optimism every day. You have to have as a station manager. There's one thing I hate is an unhappy passenger. It's supposed to look like it's going to look clockwork. That's because we're really good at it. Guys, if you through the wide gate over there, please, thank you. Organised chaos. <laughs> Let me make it work. Central to Glasgow. That's Glasgow Central. I'm ready for my cross up now. No job's too big or small. So Monday is pigeon check day. I'm going to count pigeons. Day and night for one long summer, we follow the people working all hours to keep the station on track. And coming up this time on the station. I was convinced that there was an area that had lain for many years unseen. And I was absolutely amazed it was lying right in front of me. Misa was a geezer. It served a Justin Bieber. Yes, Justin Bieber. No makeup, nothing, you know. <laughs> I've got you Buckingham Palace by the way. Oh, say hello for me. Hello, dear. <laughs> if you enjoy people watching, this is a job you should be doing. I bet you thought we did nothing there. <laughs> For generations, Glasgow Central has been the gateway to thousands of destinations across the country. Glasgow Central. For 18 zone 50, come to 50, you Almost half of all Scots of working age live within an hour of the city centre. And at the weekend, they arrive in their thousands to enjoy themselves. It's the Saturday of the Scottish Cup final between Celtic and Motherwell. The team at Central are planning for a surge of football fans travelling to the game. Good evening, you've seen that quick run through what we've got. OK, so the Scottish Cup final today. Station, pretty busy as we can see. When we get doing, we'll just set up. I'll, I'll take the front of the platform as normal. Collette's managing the back end of the queue. Scott Rail manager John Malley is in charge of dispatching enough trains to move thousands of fans to Hampden Park, Scotland's national stadium. There's plenty of trains, plenty of specials, and there's no gaps, that's it. Um, station issues. No, every final, the barriers are sort of set up, and your, your bins are out for your alcohol ban. Okay, well, I'm not. Me the best team one. <laughs> you might want to head that bit. <laughs> we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> keep an eye on the board, keep an eye on the queuing system. I think it's really, really busy. I'll um, take the trains off the board, go into words, meant for the manual board them guys, okay? That way. Just come round. My job is, I'm the travel shop manager, and what I've got to do is I've got to make sure that this queuing system goes as smoothly as possible. Once we start getting the football fans moved up into the station, I will then start to move this queue away and so that it's coming into one queue. <laughs> coming up very shortly, I think about one o'clock, um, there's a lot of uh, supporters, etc., cetera, and the, the bars outside, they'll flood into the station to try and get them onto trains, uh, and that's where it becomes really uh, busy for us in the station, you're trying to manage them and get them onto trains. There's a machine just there, do you need a hand? We're sort of really used to this, you know, crowds in the station, but today will be exceptionally busy. <laughs> Got your tickets, guys. Two tickets, thank you. What's your thinking? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're always sat on the lookout all the time. 
just your eyes and ears are everywhere, just looking for people that are needing assistance, needing help. Do you get it? Right, good stuff. Yeah, Roger, do you want to need to head up to Eleven now? Keep an eye on the train, OK? On match days, a special bylaw means that alcohol is banned on trains going to and from the football. It's a bylaw that they sort of on football trains today. All football trains are dry trains. You're not allowed on. But the train itself is a dry train. You're not allowed to. Have you got? Can you show it? Can you? I certainly can. I. You're established. That's fine. Anyway, great. You're going to take it to the ambulance. You're not going to bite anybody. Just the rules. No. Should it get really busy, or then not board anything, but board them individually and move 600 people up at a time to each train from the queue. Excuse me, mate. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Come here. You're not allowed alcohol on the train, mate. It's unopened. It's, it's, a, it's a legal ban on the... On the I know, but it's unopened, so as long as I don't open it, it's fine. No, no, oh, no, trust no, me, no. I know. Thank you. Trust me, I It's not... Excuse me. You're no. not... Uh, excuse me. Oh, trust me. Running dry trains almost always leads to tensions between staff and passengers. Support from the British Transport Police on match days is essential. It's just experience. It's just deal with the customer. You know, people, uh, when we explain to them properly, they're okay with that, you know, usually. <laughs> Guys, there's no room up here. Pull room there. I'm done. I'm done. That's the last training to get people to the to the match in time. Busy enough shift there. About four and a half thousand roughly going to the match. Extra pastures. Um, not a huge challenge, but a good one. A good atmosphere. There we are. I'm from Nottingham. Come down today. Taking charge on the platforms are the ScotRail dispatchers. They tend to mimic one another. When you hear the whistle, it's a distinctive. If the train doors are about to close. Passengers running down the platform. <laughs> on, on you get, come on. With 950 trains in and out of the station every day, there's a lot more to being a dispatcher than making sure the trains are on time. So the driver's pulling his head out so he can see me. Close the doors. And then I show my baton. And the guard takes my baton. Signify with the green flag. Oh, and ready to go is. to be alert at all time because anything can happen. Get people falling on platforms, running, crashing into one another on the wrong train, shaking their fists at you, screaming, it's chaos. Sometimes you get a bit worried, but if you're OK and you're approachable and relaxed, you can calm them down. Uh, you need to be thick-skinned in this game. We have our ways of dealing with it, which I won't go into. And I love the banter. If you cannot laugh at the end of the day, forget it. And there are various ways of making the job a bit more personal. Sometimes I've got wild hair, you know. I used to have kind of pink, purple, you name it. This one is a tenor saxophone. It's an indulgence for my love of jazz. The head gaffer said to me the other day, he'll get us all jailed, you need to get rid of it. But I'm going to misbehave and keep it on. I do have my own kit, just in case. I have uh, a pen and it extends, so I can write all my information. 
If one runs out of ink, you've got another one. A just whistle. <laughs> That's how you do it. Glasgow Central first opened in 1879. Until then, passengers had to cross the Clyde by boat or footbridge and travel via Bridge Street Station on the south of the river. An integral part of the Victorian infrastructure that makes up Central to this day is a great iron bridge which carries the rails from the south side and onwards across Argyle Street, one of the city's oldest thoroughfares. This magnificent piece of engineering has been known to generations of Glaswegians by a curious nickname. This is the Central Station Bridge, which is commonly known in Glasgow as the Helaman Umbrella. The Highlanders came to Glasgow for work, mostly down in the shipyards or down in the docks, and the Highland community coming to Glasgow largely were Gaelic speakers. Many could not speak English and found themselves in a foreign country. Uh, so it became a community of its own, and part of that community was to have a church. St Columba's Gaelic Church was built in 1839 and sat at the corner of Hope and Argyle Streets. On a Sunday particularly would be the one day of the week when they would be off and they would be able to meet their friends and have a gathering, which is what Highlanders do. They would gather together at the church and see their friends and catch up on all the news from home, from Sky or Lewis or wherever they were from. Close by was the railway bridge. When people came out of the church, it would be natural if, it, if the weather was wet to seek some shelter and that's how it became the Hillman's umbrella. It must have been very impressive at that time by the size of the congregation, because the building in Hope Street held well over a thousand people. So when a thousand people come out into the, the street, that would make it very, very busy. By 1900, the decision was made by the Caledonian Railway Company to demolish St Columba's Church to make way for an extension to the thriving new station. At that time, of course, railway companies were very, very important uh, and lots and lots and lots of money. The railway company had to pay compensation to the church and with that compensation, the church then built their new church in St Vincent Street, which is slightly further west. Today, the Heelan Man's umbrella remains an important landmark in the city and is one of the many places around the station that weary travellers can get a bite to eat. Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon. The best chip shop. The best chip, chip shop, shop in the town. In the town. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 High five. Yeah. High five. This chippy has long been a Glasgow favourite. Hi, sir. Can I help you, please? Can I get a small post of chips, please? Would you like salt and vinegar for you, sir? Just salt. Just salt. Trisha has been helping her Syrian colleague Mizar with the local language. His glass region is coming along good. Are we? Yeah. Well, all right, my man. All right, all right. Me yeah, bora to. Yeah. That one is good, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try and teach them something different. Yes. <laughs> oh, people think we're married. People ask us, is, is that my husband? I'm like, ah, no, I've been with my husband 21 years. Mizar and the Chippy made front page news when a certain A-list celebrity got the late night munchies in 2016. He just finished his gig at the Hydro and came in here. Had a supper. Yeah. 
Just uh, different, you don't know, no makeup, nothing, you know. <laughs> just, just some beef for 20 pounds, sorry, 20 euro. The makeup will be right at this Misa with the Giza. It's served to Justin Bieber. Yeah. Go Misa. Oh, Giza, always a friend, Justin Bieber. Oh, oh. For me, nearly five years in Glasgow, and working here nearly five years. I'm coming from Syria because because uh, my country, you know, very very old, very problem. Yeah, today big fratas. Do you like Salah Kenya? I come in UK. Ah, I like. It. I want to go to Scotland. Nice here, nice people. Just uh, very cold, different weather. My country, nice food. <laughs> Mizar is fasting for Ramadan, and at the height of the Scottish midsummer, can't break his fast until sunset after 10 o'clock when he finally sits down to a meal prepared by his wife. Not too much difficult, just sa same time. I need to just drink water or just, oh, sorry, uh, forget for me fasting, you know, because uh, this fun very, very warm, you know, and I work in same time 10 hours, you know. You had your turn of Yeah, full now. You're full. Yeah, lovely, lovely, my darling. Thank you very much. Hi, sir. Small wheat on It's bank holiday weekend, and the station is awash with hen parties and high jinks. For the staff, the change in pace at weekends and holidays often provides some light relief from their hectic weekday schedule. At five o'clock at night, Glasgow Central Film, when people try to get home through the week. We don't have um, a, a commuters at the weekend, we have people. Because this is the spring weekend, you have a change in who's travelling. Saturday is uh, nice in here. They're all coming all dressed up. It's a leisure day for most of the passengers. I would say 70% of them are all going out for lunch, dinner, whatever. First bus or McGill's, all right? Hi there. Information officer Ellen has worked on the railway since she was 18. It has changed tremendously. The shops, it's more cosmopolitan now than what it was years ago. Um, I remember there'd be news agent stalls and fruit stalls and things like that, but it's all huge changes. And it, it's, good, it's just going with the times. Uh, it, it reminds me when I was a child, I remember the, the notice boards were up on those glass panels. And this is instead of a departure board that we've got today, it was boards that was put up and it was all sometimes chopped in. I started working the railway in 1978. I was the first female stewardess at Queen Street Station. It was all boys I was working with at the time. In fact, I remember to this day, um, one of the members of staff was asking, was I the girlfriend of one of the stewards? And I said, no, I'm here to work, I'm a stewardess. They were, what, a, steward, a female stewardess? That was them told, I, I'm a girl and I can do the job the same as you. I was here when the duty manager wore a bowler hat, the, the, had the striped trousers on, the wee watch on his waistcoat, and he would stand in the middle of the station under the clock and greet everybody in the mornings. I would like to see that happening again here. Ticket will be valid on a first bus, all right? Out all the jobs that I ever did in the railway, I absolutely love this one because I'm out mixing with the passengers. Uh, there's not two days the same. If you enjoy people watching, this is a job you should be doing. This weekend, there's a wedding reception in the station's Grand Central Hotel. Like generations of lovers before them, the station's clock holds special significance for newlyweds Ian and Elaine. We met several times on our initial dates um, under the very clock of Central Station and um, it was always very exciting standing there 
very apprehensive waiting for him to appear or the other way around. So that was one thing. You always turned up, which was good, yes. <laughs> Train to Kilmarnock, 13 minutes past. It's away. Just away there, just watched it out. The duty manager in charge of getting the bank holiday revellers home is Derek. Where is it? Kalinock? Well. Kilmarnock. 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 2233. You see that one there? Oh yeah. That on Kilmarnock. That on time. The night for a Saturday night is extremely quiet compared to com in comparison to other Saturday nights, which is quite surprising considering the events that are on in Glasgow just now. I thought we'd actually get hammered, to be honest with you, but in, in respect, it's, it's actually quite a good night. So pretty satisfying for us so far, and just hope it stays the same. But we may get a wee burst in the last hour, so this is when it really does kind of get busier for the station. Seafood diet, but it's easy eats. This is Glasgow's uh, finest fried everything with cheese on it. Spicy chicken, chicken nuggets, onion bagging, chicken pakora. Wait, but we need to get a street. Oh, sorry, we need to get a street. Adios, amigos. Do you want a bit? Oh, you're all right, pal. Honestly, God, my idea, all right. Thanks, guys. Just as Derek's shift draws to an end, there's a hitch. The last train to Edinburgh has hit a problem. How do you mean? Sorry? Well, the driver won't take you out unless he knows it's a, a, good, a good couple. An earlier problem with joining the carriages means they must be separated before they can be safely reattached. We were trying to hook these trains together. Well, we pulled a cord, it didn't work. I need a set, mate, it's absolutely jam packed. As this is the last Edinburgh train of the day, if they can't fix it, hundreds of passengers will be stranded. Derek will have to find a replacement. Well, we're going to use the set number nine. Can we get an announcement to everyone to park for nine for the set number, please? <laughs> Thanks, pal. Guys, park from nine. We're going to park from nine. This is going nowhere. Number nine. We can't get it split, sir. We can't split the set. Shorts. Aye, number nine. Nine. Cheers, bud. Nine. Number nine, guys. We can't win this train at all, so we had to change it to part from nine, whereas we have a replacement set, we'll take the Edinburgh passengers home, and we will work on this set to get it away later on. That's how it's done. With over a hundred thousand passengers and several hundred workers passing through on an average day, running Scotland's busiest station is an enormous undertaking. Every day something always happens, every day there's always some challenges or something that people aren't happy with or so you've just got to try and be optimistic every single day. Station manager Susan Holden is in charge of the day-to-day -day business at Glasgow Central. I just like to make people happy. I've always done that in my career. It's really about trying to make sure that I keep people as happy as possible, even when they're upset and I can't deliver or something's went wrong, I do try and keep a positive, positive spirit. 
But although there are lots of different train operating companies, like ScotRail, obviously Virgin, TransPennine, we get on really well together. So it means then we, all, we have a good vibe in the station. Security responsibilities are shared between rail staff and the British Transport Police, who have permanent presence. Yeah, if you fire it to me, I'll get it on my phone. Over. Sergeant McWhirter has worked at Central for 20 years. For the first two hours, it's very much high profile, doing the security check of the station, make sure the public can see us. There's no set pattern, you know, it's none of this going to stand here for two hours that you should be, in my mind, a constant roving patrol. So the staff see me moving about, I'm in and out of the retail premises, maybe once or twice every couple of hours, checking all the southbound trains and, and just been there. When I'm checking these trains, more so earlier on, but prior to the departing, you're looking for people who are coming up without luggage and then potentially returning with luggage. Occasionally you do get luggage thieves checking the trains out before they leave. And realistically it's a security check, just looking for anything else. It's a bit untoward, um, prior to the train departing. Crime-wise, there was less than one crime per offence a day, so it's, it's not exactly a hotbed of crime. The station is relatively safe. The national terrorism threat level is currently classed as being severe, meaning station staff are always on alert. Shift manager Drew has to make sure his staff are on their toes. For part of the security, we will place a covert package, a suspicious looking package in what we call a red zone. I have security staff walking around carrying out security checks. I'm going to try to discreetly put it in a location in the concourse and I will then look out to see if they find it. If they can do that within half an hour, I'm a happy man. If they do it after half an hour, I'm not so happy. We monitor my staff, there's one or two who wander about carrying out security checks, so hopefully they, they locate the area that I put it, they carry out their proper searches. And it's not just the obvious areas that need to be monitored. We're going down to the basement, which is the, the, another part of the security check. The enormous station basement is part of trainee Aaron's regular beat. There's lots of access points, so people could get in, and so it's just kind of keeping an eye on that and trying to do it as regular as possible uh, to try and make sure that there's nobody down here that shouldn't be down here, or not nothing that you know shouldn't be down here. So it's just keeping an eye for the same things as, as um, the, the top level, just suspicious bags, things like that. Security personnel to the station 24 hours a day. The station footprint extends to around two square miles of ground, making the job of monitoring security a daily workout. On an average day, you end up doing about 30,000 steps, which is about 15 miles, going up and down the platforms and stuff and, and wandering around. This is all according to my phone, so <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, the, the phone helps in uh, recording quite how knackered I am at the end of the day. <laughs> platform 15 has the dual benefit of being a really important platform for you to check, um, so it's important to be up here, and also it's, <laughs> it's lovely sunshine and a very nice view. We get a lot of uh, train spotters in, um, train enthusiasts, and so a lot of them don't know straight away to, to go up and check in because they need to check in at the, the reception first uh, so that they're allowed to be up here. Uh, some of them don't realise that, and so they just come up and start kind of noting down and taking pictures of trains, which is obviously a bit of a red flag to, uh, to, to people. It's 10 minutes since Drew planked his suspect package. Never able to stay your message. Yeah, we are got a package down at the uh, piano. I'll be down in a couple of things. 
Neil. Yeah, boy. Look like that. Well spotted. That's the one I placed in. <laughs> Good lad. As you can see, Neil well during the uh, security. Obviously looking at all the hot spot areas. The package was put down at 12.45 and I get the call at 13.02. So that's approximately 17 minutes. I'm happy with that. I said, we can't rest on our laurels. We need to be vigilant at all times. As well as a regular beat patrol in the station, the British Transport Police bring in specialist officers from time to time. Explosives team PC Ray Martin and his dog routinely give the concourse the once over. This is Floyd, the English Springer Spaniel. He's just turned five years old now and uh, he's an explosive search dog for our counter terrorism operations that we, we carry out in railway stations across the country. This is obviously the major station in Scotland, so we're in here quite frequently. I know this every nook and cranny and step and crack in the wall and everything in this station yet, as this Floyd. It's probably almost a, a, a daily occurrence, someone leaving their, their luggage unattended despite the announcements and the, the warnings and whatnot. But when you've got Floyd there, his nose tells us whether it's just a, a regular bag or, or something more sinister. It's a case that's been left behind by somebody, um, we don't know who, but Floyd's gave it a sniff, so we know it's all right to, to move. Might be this gentleman here, it looks like, that he's running. <laughs> Sorry. Is it yours, sir? Oh, it's mine, I've grinned it. <laughs> no, but if you can just keep it, keep it with you. Aye, I've got to Buckingham Palace, by the way. Oh, say hello for me. Hello, dear. <laughs> the officers are all um, trained to, to deal with the, the luggage and up to the point where they deem it suspicious and then we would use the dog then, because if it is suspicious, we can't go opening it if you think it's suspicious. Um, so we'd use the dog then to tell us if there's anything untoward inside it. You do have to trust him. Everything's on his say-so, but I've got complete confidence and faith in him that if there's something there, then he'll tell me that. And if there's not, then, yeah, trust him. We're basically putting your, your life in his hands, I suppose. The owner of the bag is 84-year-old Richard Gilmore, who once worked on the railways himself. Well, I worked the railway for 20 years as a conductor on the trains. Before he was a railway man, Richard was in the army. Today, he's travelling with his fellow veterans. Being an old soldier, you could ken better than that to leave things lying about. Kind of help it when you're 84. <laughs> We're off to the Royal Garden Party the Veterans Garden Party at Buckingham Palace. Called Cameronian Scottish Rifles. We were, were Scotland's only rifle regiment. And we got disbanded 50 years ago on the 14th of May, 1968. And look at us all new. Oh, codgers. <laughs> but that's one thing about the army, you never get your army pals. You're friends, friends forever and ever. Yes. It shall not grow old as we'd ever left, left grow old. It shall not weary the end of the years <laughs> condemned. <laughs> At the going down of the sun <laughs> and in the morning, we will remember. We shall yeah. remember. Yeah. Bye. Right, on you go. He doesn't got a pay packet, he just gets one of these. So that's his reward. That's what he does it all for. As he loses it, no. Good lad, Floyd. Good boy. Good boy. Glasgow Central is a terminus station, the end of the line for hundreds of trains every day.
But below ground, in the bowels of the city, lie a set of through lines known as the Low Level. This part of the station opened in 1896, 17 years after the overground terminal. Today, there are only two working low-level platforms, but prior to the now infamous beaching cuts of the 1960s, there were more. Heading down to the next level where the Victorian platform is located, which I found many, many years ago now. Station tour guide Paul has worked on the railway all his working life. Just open the secret door here. In the 1990s, he rediscovered a part of the station which had lain untouched for decades. I was convinced that there was an area down on looking at the maps of the station, the original maps, that had lain for many years unseen. Some of the low-level station area was closed off in the mid-1960s. Where we are right now is underneath the escalators themselves, and you can hear them. Um, going by my plans, I was aware that there was additional platforms down here. After having come down this staircase there, I then turned to my right, and I was absolutely amazed what was lying right in front of me. Straight ahead, what I see? The Victorian platform here that was last used, mid-1960s. Absolutely incredible. This place was a heaving mass of people throughout the years, 1920s, 30s, 40s, and the rest. It's like going back in time. This is definitely the land of time forgot for Central Station down here. Every few minutes, the silence in this abandoned platform is interrupted by a passing through train on the low level. You should now see this train depart for this platform. I think that really gives you the atmosphere and the feeling of the power of trains coming through here. This area here was vibrant. It was full of passengers coming and going, coming into the city for their work. There was a huge uh, wooden booking office just here. They would sell tickets here. There was a waiting room just on the left-hand side. That's all gone now, as you can see. And you can also see that throughout the years, the additional walls that have been added here, which in comparison to the original architecture is quite stark. Look at these magnificent columns that are here. Uh, absolutely magnificent Gothic Victorian column, so well preserved, supporting most of the side of the uh, station itself, the west side of the station. But look at these wonderful vaulted ceilings. These tiles are in fantastic condition underneath these years and years of soot. So if you can imagine in your mind's eye, the train, the steam engine coming through here and stopping at that platform. But then again, a true illustration of how dirty it must have been down here for people, passengers and employees. This area here, this was the Victorian ladies' waiting area for the time. The tiles stopped there. The reason for that was the Caledonian Railway Company, when I am saving money, they had a massive banner that ran from there right down, advertising the Cali itself, but in turn saving money, because people that come down here at that time naturally assumed that it was tiled right along. That's the original colour of the tiles there, and you can see they're so well made that we can bring them back to a real, fresh, vibrant colour again. I've spent many hours walking about this place, 
on my own, trying to imagine what it must have been like, bumping into the Victorians coming and going, uh, the guys that sold the tickets, the men that swept the platforms, and the lives that they had down here. The greatest thing for me would be to see this complete area here restored to back to what it was in the original days. Six different train companies operate out of Central Station and between them they employ around 500 staff. Many of the railway staff based here travel thousands of miles in the course of their working week. I've been working on the railway for four and a half years. I started the job in November 2013. Um, there was five of us that started at the same time. Um, I think it was about, it's about 996 applicants and five of us got the job and I was one of them. I worked in, in Asda night shift. I'm earning more money than what I did then. And plus, I kind of wanted a job that was in, in the centre of Glasgow. I've always wanted to live in Glasgow. I'm not from Glasgow, I'm from Wisher. Anytime I go back home to Wisher, you kind of realise that you're in a better place. No offence to all those people from Wisher. So I think we're about ready to let the passengers on now. And welcome on board the 1309 Trans Spenning Express service from Glasgow Central to Manchester Airport. My name's Craig, I'm your conductor. Any problems, any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Yeah, I'm now getting ready for departure. Thank you. I could do it in my sleep, I think, in Spanish. Yeah, done it about a thousand times, I think. is music. I've got 10 minutes to spare. I want to spend it playing music of some kind. I've got seven guitars and a piano. I've got loads of random musical instruments lying about this little one bedroom flat. Any more tickets, please? Totally addicted to it. That's it's all I really think about most of the time, even when I'm doing the job. When I'm sitting in the back cab and you've got nothing else to do, you just end up whistling or singing a wee song yourself. The earliest thing I can remember was, I must have been about three or four years old, in my dad's car, and all I could remember him playing was this, this guitar riff, this da -da 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 -da, and like, even at that age, I was like, well, what is that? It sounds amazing. So, well, is has been my favourite song my whole life. always been my favourite song. I know it back to front, I know every single part of it. The acoustics in the station are fantastic because we've got this huge big glass ceiling in here. If you get to play the piano kind of early in the morning, about half past nine, ten o'clock, you can hear it. The sound really booms across the full station. It carries really, really well. I always want to play some kind of musical instrument, even when I'm at my work. So just having this here is just adds a wee element of fun to your job. I play it for my own sort of fun, my own benefit, and, and if anyone else enjoys it, then fantastic, even better.
high days and holidays make spring a busy time at the station. For Susan, it's also the time of year she gets some very significant feedback. Twice a year, we have what we call the National Rail Passenger Survey, and today um, we're receiving the results for the spring. So they basically have sent people around to ask our customers what they think of our stations um, across the UK. And so between us and the other 19 stations that Network Rail run, we see where we sit on the kind of league table. So it's a little bit of pressure uh, today for me. The survey will rank the 20 mainline UK stations based on its findings. For Susan, a high score is important. I have had number one station last spring, um, which was really, I couldn't believe it. I'm a bit competitive, so I do like to be number one. And King's Cross tends to always get number one. And I keep asking Laura, who's the manager down there, how, what does she do to, to be number one? So the two of us are quite uh, competitive together. So we try and kind of work together to see if we can find that magic solution, that magic ingredient that's going to make me number one all the time. Central has changed continually throughout its 140-year existence. And it's that long history that provides its enduring appeal. It's a very historical-looking station. Uh, it looks good. I'm really impressed. It's a person with people, a person with good shot. I did the New York um, Central Station, and this beats, beats it a hundred times. Worst thing about last pigeons, if you don't like birds. Pigeons! <laughs> it feels like the station was an afterthought and it's built in between the old buildings. I like the fact it's fairly open. I like the, the, the kind of broad outlook on the concourse. And in terms of operationally, for me, it's great because I can see everything going on. So when things are going wrong, I can see it quite, quite clearly, especially from where I work. I like the staff, I like the people, I quite like the fact we all got on really well. You know, it's about the architecture and the history of it. It's, it's, it's a lovely station, it's one of the nicest stations I think there, there is. The survey results have been sent by email to all 20 station managers throughout the country. I've got my email, um, I'm just going to try and get in. I'd say that Glasgow Central would definitely be up there in the top top three anyway, mm -hmm. I would say. Well, we're hoping it's going to be Glasgow Central. I wouldn't say it was to be the best station, but on the other hand, it would be the worst. Glasgow Central's going to put on top. So, I have done... I'm number six, which is not great. Gutted. I'm, I'm gutted. So that's it's difficult to take, I must say. St Pancras is number one, King's Cross is number two, and Glasgow Central is number six. For me, it's a fail. <laughs> it's not good. Availability of seating seems to be an issue, so maybe I need to be a bit more proactive about that and actually ask my customers, you know, and actually maybe that's some of the actions I need to take. Facilities for bicycle parking. More people are using their bike, so actually I need to look at where we're going to put the bicycles. Just now, I think it's maybe that it's not in the most accessible area, but you're limited with infrastructure, so do you want a nice station that's historical, looks good and open, but do I want to start putting bicycles somewhere to kind of destroy that ambience? <laughs> To the Isle of Aaron. You can, yes. Yes, yeah. perfect. So we've both got a rail card. Okay. Just singles or it's on yeah. the yeah. It's bank holiday Monday, and with the miracle of a Scottish summer continuing, another hot day is putting pressure on the ticket office. Uh, when it's this sunny, kind of anything that has a coast or a beach is generally kind of quite busy. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 
I think the minute anybody sees a hint of sunshine, it's like water all the way, really. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is true, then. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Sorry, Kudo. That's me finished. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Can I try a wee bottle of water? Sure. Here is our passenger announcement due to the points where we are at Shields. First ticket sentence from Glasgow to Paisley is in place. We apologise for any inconvenience that this may cause. 1438 cancelled. 07 cancelled as well. Scotland's hottest summer in years is taking its toll on the tracks. Overheated rails have caused a points failure at a major junction affecting services to Paisley and onwards to the coast. Bank holiday Monday, the sun is shining, everybody wants to go to the beach down at Troon and Air, but it's just unfortunately this has happened at this particular time. Hi there, do you know if the 1507 one's going to go? The next one is going to be till 4 o'clock today, where are you travelling to? So it's just to the pays, I mean, get it pays you're fine, it's back to a normal service, it's just here, can't get in here. If you're, is it a crossing harbour you're going to? Yes. Why is there cross the road, right. turn left, it's the pound shop, the number nine bus. Right. right. The ticket will be valid on there. Sometimes it's out with our control and all we can do is reassure them we'll get them home one way or the other. They did tell us four o'clock, estimate for repairs. Uh, a lot of people come back soon, they're getting refused on the buses with the tickets. Yeah, no bother, just go down here, all right? You all right? Just then walking for an update, as the inspector's been on it. A rumour about, you know, is they're going to reinstate after the 48 lives, but I want to get confirmation, just give me a wee minute. All right, OK. Hey, Ah, that's a Roger Grant. I need a mail with taxis. People are going for ferries to Southampton, so we need to try and get them to the road pals. Is that all right? Are you going to the cruise ship? Yes. yes. Right, how many is there of you? Two. Right, if you want to go out there, that's called Gordon Street, there'll be someone with these jackets on and they're putting a taxi on for good. Right, Ben, I checked out that, uh, you shouted through the jacket about the reinstating chains and that after the 48. Uh, we have control, no matter about it. Uh, we want to go to Presbyterian Park. Yeah. That's how it's got the, the rectify the points problem. So we're, we're hoping to get it moving, but we have what we call consequential delays. So hopefully an hour to two hours this could take to fix all this all together. The points are now fixed, but there's a knock-on effect for crew as well as passengers. Half the trains are stuck on the other end of the route. Some of them are stuck here, some of the drivers are stuck on the other end of the route. It's just trying to get everyone back together and get the service back to normal. Ben, I'm going to control the phone. We're looking for the driver for the 1548 Lards. Is that a staff announcement for the driver of the 1548 Sales to Lards? Could you please contact the train crew supervisor? It's going to be an Edinburgh going into number five to form the 13 Newcastle. Glasgow Central. They reinstated 1600 yeah, service to air like all the park from platform number 12. That's the reinstated 1600 service to air. The service will depart from platform number 12. I bet you thought we did nothing, eh? <laughs> Every night when the passenger services have all stopped for the day, rail maintenance teams come out under the cover of darkness. Remember, no cables in the yellow writing. Do not paint over. With all the problems the station has been having with the heat, keeping on top of track maintenance is a priority. Have you ever been abroad? What's the most common colour car you'll get abroad? <laughs> 
Right, so the reason we paint the rail white, because it reduces 5% heat out the rail and in turn reduces the chances of points failures. The points divert and converge trains onto different lines. And if the points are too hot, that'll cause points failures, right? Basically, we do this in the summer to reduce the heat in the rail. If the points are out, we can't run trains. It's like a bottleneck. Because all the trains stop at Glasgow Central. They're running out, you know what I mean? And that backlog can even run right back to as far as England. Everybody's asked the question why it doesn't come out the factory white, but I've never had any response to back the reason why it doesn't come out the factory white. Under that rail. Well, there's no point in doing it if you're not going to do it right, you know what I mean? And to be fair, the boys are usually brand new, they don't need to be dealt twice. We don't paint the whole track because it just wouldn't be practical. There's a lot of rail. <laughs> The maintenance team continue through the night, making sure Glasgow Central is back on track for the morning. Next time on Inside Central Station. We couldn't believe it's June when we've got leaves blowing about and winds of this speed. This is unprecedented. Trees have come from gardens, the high winds have brought them down, they've brought down fences. I'm going to kill you, no. there's no trees! Crazy We've got Jay-Z and Beyonce at Hampton today, so there's usually a lot of glamour going. So I think we're looking at about 14,000 or something. She thinks she has Beyonce. <laughs> we're decorating the clock for Motor Neurons Week. We need to remember what time it is.